So today I'm doing a video on how to connect the AC300 in parallel with another AC300 to connect it to your home electrical panel powering 240 volts, which is the type of electricity we need to power all those appliances in our house. Now I went over the specs of the Bluetti AC300 in a couple other videos, so I won't go into too much detail on that, but just in a nutshell, the AC300 can power 3000 watts continuously at 120 volts, and it can handle up to four of these B300 batteries, and those are a little over three kilowatt hours each. So literally you could have 12 kilowatt hours on one AC300 unit. And this unit is separate from the battery. So you have to have at least one battery for this unit to turn on. Now, when you connect both of these together in parallel, you can get 240 volts at 6,000 watts continuous. But keep in mind, each unit can only do 3,000 watts continuous. So those two phases have to be in balance. You can't have one doing 4,000 watts while the other one does 2,000 watts and not have a trip. The whole thing will trip. So you got to try to keep each one or each phase under 3,000 watts. Now, paralleling these two units together, you could have four batteries on each one with a total of 24 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is about the average for that a home in the U.S. and Texas uses per day. Now, to show you how impressive just one of these AC300s are with even just one battery, I powered a 65 pound Hercules jackhammer the other day. And here's a quick video of that. We were trying to dig this hole through solid limestone and we dug 21 inches through solid limestone to install like a pole um, that was going to hold a gate on our property. And the AC300 powered it with no problems at all. The jackhammer was running about 2400 watts when it was continuously running and it could surge to about 4000 watts that we saw on it. This thing powered it no problems, it did not trip out, it worked perfectly. Now I want to show you how I'm connecting two of these AC300s in parallel to power up the entire 200 amp residential panel on a short-term rental that I own here. So let's get into the details on how I'm doing this. So connect two of these AC 300s into parallel. You're going to need this cable right here. One end plugs into the 30 amp plug right there. The other end of it plugs into the other 30 amp right there. And then those two get combined together right here into this 30 amp like RV kind of receptacle here. And so what we did is we installed a 30 amp RV outlet just like that. So this can plug right into it. It twist locks in and we have a circuit actually ran on our panel here, which is this 30 amp double breaker right here that we can literally click over and power this whole panel. Now this is not done up to code. This is really just done for temporary purposes right now to get us hooked up. But how you really want to do this to be up to code is you're going to want to put a lockout breaker. Actually, you want to move that breaker up here to where you cannot have the grid and this on at the same time. If you do that, that's bad news. You're probably gonna fry the inverter or at a minimum, if that doesn't happen, you're gonna send power back up the lines to some unsuspecting power company person working up on a pole out there who's trying to repair whatever line's damaged. So you definitely wanna have that lockout on there. If you don't know what you're doing, definitely get an electrician to help you out with this part. Now that you know that, I'm just gonna show you how I did it for temporary purposes to get it hotted up. So I'll link to this outlet that I got. It's about 40 bucks. I actually took the big can. It actually was, was gonna sit out probably about three inches. We kind of used a little four inch box, cut in box and then just took the top off or top off it right here, off the original one that I bought that you'll see on Amazon here and just kind of jury rig it so it would be set inside the wall. We've got a 10 gauge wire, two hots, ground and a neutral coming up landing the two hots on this breaker. And of course the neutral connecting up to the neutral bar and the ground connecting up to the ground bar. So we bought this little nifty contraption. I'll also link to that on Amazon. It's basically a, a lockout breaker switch. So you can basically put it on the breaker and you fold this little piece over and you can put a lock through it. So nobody can touch this at all unless they have the key to take this off. So that will ensure that nobody accidentally turns that on when it shouldn't be. And a lot of you probably already have a generator port that powers your home just because you're using a gas or a propane generator. So this AC300 with this cable, you could, might be able to plug right into your existing one um, that you have. If not, you might need some sort of adapter that you can find, dog bone adapters they have, um, so you can adapt 
to make sure your plug fits into whatever you have that you had installed originally with your house. So you need at least one battery per AC300. So you'll need two AC300s, the inverter portion, that's the top portion, and you'll need at least one B300 battery on each. And again, you can have a max of four batteries on each for 12 kilowatt hours each one, maxing out total 24 hours, 24 kilowatt hours combined. So here's what you'll need to connect these into 240 volts. You'll need this cable that I mentioned right here that plugs into each one and combines it into this cable that plugs into your outlet. You'll also need this communication cable that plugs in to the side, the port down here, and this one right here. Once you combine that, which I will do right now. All right, so I got this cable plugged in to each side of the inverter. Now we just need to go into settings and put it into split phase mode. So do that by going into the settings button here, hit next, and you'll see where it says single phase right there. You gotta change that to split phase. And when you do this, you're gonna get an alarm. Don't worry about the alarm. It'll turn off as soon as you set the other one. So split phase, this is the master. And you can hear the alarm going off. So let's go to the other one now and put it into split phase as well. There we go, split phase, and it's gonna be the slave. What that means is the master, when you change settings on this, it's gonna control and automatically control this one. As you can see, the alarm went out. Now we are in split phase mode. So what I'm going to do is plug in each of these 30 amp plugs into the receptacle. You'll see one is labeled AC1. I put that into the master. And the other one is labeled AC2. I'm gonna put that into what they call the slave. All right, I've got both of those plugged in. Now I'm gonna plug in the end of this cord right into our generator port. There we go, plugs in, then turns to the right to lock. There we go. It's locked in, I gave it a tug. You can tell it's in nice and tight. Now at this point, we're still not pushing power here yet. To do that, I'd have to hit the AC off button. Hit that button, you turn to AC on, it'll automatically power up the other inverter as well, and it will send power to this plug. Now I don't wanna do that yet because before I send any power this direction, I want to make sure my grid power coming into this panel is turned off. I never wanna have two powers coming in. Now, even though I do have this breaker that's off right now, which is what is going to energize this panel from the Blue Eddy AC300. I have that off, but just to be safe, I'm gonna hit the grid first and we will kill power to this home. So as you can see, the power is on still from the grid right now into this room. Now I'm going to disconnect grid power. There's my big 200 amp switch here, so you'll see the lights go out. All right, power's out. Lights went out completely. I'm gonna check on my meter the bus bars and make sure I have no power at all coming from the grid. So if I go across bus bars here, I've got no power coming in, awesome. Now we know we're safe to go ahead and take power from the Blue Eddy AC300 and send power through this. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna go into the settings here, hit AC off and it says you wanna turn the AC output on, on, there we go. Now we should have 240 volts coming into this breaker right now, but I don't have it on yet. Once I hit this switch on, then it'll send power up to the rest of the panel. But before I do that, I wanna make sure I have good power coming into this breaker right here from the AC300 to make sure I'm not gonna damage any of my appliances. So let's check that out. And that's kind of hard for me to do on camera here, so I'm gonna do that off camera. All right, I just checked it. I had 239 volts, close enough to 240. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of my breakers to the off position first, at least all my 240 volt circuits. Now all I have is my 120 volt circuits on, but you know what, I'll turn those off too. We'll just start from scratch in the off position for everything. Just like that. Now the whole panel's off, so now I'm going to energize this entire panel by hitting this switch on from the AC300. There we go. Now we should have power everywhere up this panel and we'll start hitting the 120 volt circuits first. There we go, 
There we go. I hit the one with the mudroom lights. Awesome. All right. All the 120 volt circuits are on now. And as I walk through the house, you can see lights on. All the lights on in here. Ceiling fans going in here. Check the refrigerator, make sure it's on. Yep, sure is. Let's go ahead and turn the TV on as well. So with all those on, we have one showing no watts and the other one showing 310 watts. So one whole phase really isn't even on right now. Well, it's on, but there's no power being pulled from the panel on that. Now, again, this does 3000 watts. So you're going to have to choose wisely which 240 volt circuits you want to run. Now for me, it would be like, okay, I just want to run maybe the stove top because it's electric. I'd flip the stove top breaker over and I could run one burner at a time in there. Make sure to, not to trip, go over 3000 watts on one leg or 6000 watts total. So from what I see here, this house is all electric. I can only use like one of the 240 volt circuits at a time. So if I want the water heater on heating up water, I better not power anything else besides the lights in the fridge. But there's no way I can do, say, the water heater and do the oven at the same time. That would just put this over spec and it would time out. And you'd have to wait and reset the inverters. But that's as simple as it is to actually connect this. Now, again, this is not done to code. I just did this for temporary purposes. I'm not saying you should do it this way, but I am showing you how easy it is with the AC300 and a generator port to go ahead and get power to your whole house. And running just lights, the refrigerators, TV, I mean, these two units with even just one battery could probably last over 24 hours pretty easily. Now, if you throw an oven in there or you try to power your AC unit, maybe you get a, a soft start. This I'm sure could start it with a soft start, but you're going to drain the batteries within probably three to four hours. So you won't have a whole lot of backup, especially with just one battery if you're trying to run AC. So I wouldn't recommend running AC with this. Now you get two, three batteries on each one of these, then yeah, for the soft start, I think you could probably do that. Though I haven't tried it yet, I do think it would work. Now, for those of you looking for just backup power to get started, I do recommend the AC300 here. Buy just one unit with one battery. At least that'll get you backed up with some lamps, TV, refrigerator, internet router, things, smaller things like that. And then as your budget allows, scale up, buy another battery. Then once you have two batteries, you have even more backup, right? Or more time you can back up your house. And then after you have two, of these batteries now you can buy another ac300 inverter and then buy this cable that you can combine them into parallel and the communication cable the generator port a breaker and some wire and you literally have a way to power your whole entire panel up so it's a way to start small and then scale up and i'm all about starting small taking bite sizes at this because solar can be expensive if you try to do it all up front at one time and i'll have links in the description of this video where you can buy the inverter the battery also have a discount code in there if I can get one as well. And I also have links to the generator plug that I show in this video, that little lockout breaker switch that you can put on there, the lock to keep somebody from using that. Because another thing is, if somebody was able to turn that on, even if I didn't have the Blue Eddy power to it, literally that plug would become energized down there. So if a kid lifted it up and touched it, they could get shocked. So it's really critical to have some sort of lockout on there. I would not operate this without some sort of way to not let someone accidentally turn that switch on. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And we'll see you all in the next video.